I'll be showing you a sh relatively short journey of data modeling at Ivan. So how we started about two and a half years ago and where we're at now. Uh, but let's start with who I am. So I'm Stan Sanders um, from the Netherlands. I am a data engineering manager at Ivan. Um, started as a data engineer there, but grew about a year ago into managing the centralized data and analytics team. So it's a part of, like it's a bunch of analytics engineers, data science, uh, data analysts, and data engineers. Um, before this, I did some analytics. I did some bigger data migrations, but I feel like I'm still pretty new to the field, but, but what I'll be, like, first maybe what Ivan is about, so you have an idea. So Ivan is an open source data infrastructure uh, provider, so we provide databases uh, to customers, but also uh, streaming tools like Kafka or Flink, uh, ClickHouse as well as a, as a data warehouse, uh, relatively new, and it's all centralized and you can have it on any of the clouds. And anything I'll be talking about today is how we internally analyze what customers do with all these tools. Um, so you'll have an idea. Um, this is the journey I'll be talking about. In the end, you see what Kosti is talking about. So it's also what we are thinking about uh, very far away from even where you're at. So it was good to learn about that. Um, but I started in about June 2020. We took our first BI tool into use. Only after that, we started our data platform. Uh, and that's actually when I joined. So when I joined, we could start from scratch, uh, which was magnificent. Uh, the only problem is that two and a half years later, you look at your own legacy code and you're like, shit, why did we do that? But uh, that's, that's just how it goes. Um, so then after that, when you had the data platform, took went pretty well for a while, but eventually we had to split it up. Uh, started looking at product analytics and then now Maybe that should have been actually more at the beginning. I hope that if you start now, you start looking at metrics first and not last. Um, but I'll go through each of these and then uh, you have an idea of how we grew as a company and hopefully you'll learn from the mistakes that we made. So in, in June 2020, we actually were using Supermetrics in Google Data Studio because we didn't have a data warehouse yet. Uh, and we were reading directly from our backend Postgres database or read replica from the Postgres database. Uh, and we were doing data modeling in our BI tool, uh, still uh, seeing uh, the, like the remnants of that, still trying to get rid of that, because our BI tool SciSense uh, is actually one where you write SQL queries and then you build a chart on it and you cannot like, there's no layer in between really that you can use, um, which is a real pain in the ass. Um, and more on that later. Uh, but then when we joined, we, uh, we actually started a data warehouse. We put everything together in uh, Google BigQuery. I learned about DBT only then. Uh, well, not only then, but just when we started. It was perfect to start from scratch with that. Uh, and we started doing our orchestrations in Airflow. So we were running DBT core, uh, scheduling our DBT with Airflow, but also scheduling extractions, etc. And uh, kudos to Supermetrics, because we could just switch it over to BigQuery instead of using Google Data Studio. Um, so that's where we were then, uh, and we started creating our first like dimensions and entities and like first star schemas, um, pretty basic and it, it worked well for a really long time. Uh, and like maybe for over a year it went well, I think we were scaling quite rapidly. So we were reaching over hundred data models in, in 2021 then. And then we were running into problems because our lineage was massive, incredibly complex, uh, too many data models, also old data models, new data models, like even though we were only doing it for one and a half year. Uh, and also the complexity of our SQL and our BI tool was getting incredibly complex because we had the BI tool before we had our data platform. And probably if I compare it to some of you who have 10 years of legacy code and Terra data and I don't know what is probably nothing, but it felt incredibly complex. Um, so what we did is we were actually going to break it up into smaller chunks. Uh, this is probably the, what you have been seeing over LinkedIn over the past few years. So uh, we were taking inspiration from the data mesh and basically splitting up our data in domains. It's maybe a bit of an overkill, but it, it helped us at least to like split up and grow them more independently. And we don't have to look at the whole complex, like the complexity as a whole, but we would rather really split it up. Um, again, 
going back to software engineering, that's where that all, this all came from. Uh, so it's really like splitting data into domains. You distribute the ownership of those domains and people can work on them independently and treating data as a product. Sounds all great, but what we actually did is we just started splitting it up into domains. Um, we decided on our domains, how we were doing them. It's really hard to actually do this. I think in some, for some people, uh, like it's more natural when you have really distinct business units that do not interact with each other. We don't have that. Um, but we, we got together, we figured out our initial domains. Uh, what makes it actually really hard then is to figure out that you have no cyclical dependencies because you still want to have this directed acyclical graph that we were talking about earlier. Still haven't always figured that out, so running into issues there. Uh, and basically what we do between those domains is we we expose our published layer. And in our published layer, there's things like uh, the dimensions, certain facts, or like aggregate tables, or like this one big table or a white table. Uh, so what's nice there is that marketing doesn't need to know how we build our platform data models. They can only see the eventual output of that and they use it and they can assume that everything is fine. Um, uh, learning doing that, we actually found out that migrating is really, really hard. Uh, so it was really easy to create new data models, but it's really, really hard to retire old ones. Well, I think you all know this. Um, so as you can see there, we were growing quite steadily. Uh, our data models that were not in the domain. And then uh, once we started moving over to domains, uh, like it, it, it has to still go completely down the blue line, but we're not there yet. But at least what we have done is we have stopped people creating tables not in domains. Actually with CI CD checks, so it's not possible anymore. And there's all these kind of checks that certain things you cannot create uh, certain Naming, like you need to stick to certain naming conventions when you create something, all those kind of things. So like, um, what I've found is that you can always start creating the new thing, but unless, until you stop the old uh, code from being created or when people create more things, then like there's no point. So always make sure you, like we, we should have probably stopped already here, people creating domain, uh, not tables not in the domain so that the switch would have been easier, but you almost learn it a bit too late. Um, also with this is like, it's probably really easy to create 10 different tables for all the dimensions you have and then improve everything, column names, lineage, uh, table names all at once. But what I have learned there is often easier, at least in our case, to, to change it. Like if you change uh, the, the physical location of a table, keep all the column names the same because then it's just, changing the table name, and it's real quick. If you don't do that, the migration from these old and new data models is gonna take ages, maybe even a year, and the definitions are gonna live apart, and you're never gonna get them the same again, because somebody will not use your new table because they're like, yeah, but I made the change to the old table, and it has this like column, and we use it in. So like, do it in really, really, really small uh, incremental uh, ways. Then it's actually gonna be a lot easier to migrate still in progress as you can see but I uh, thought I had to show you that it's not perfect but we're going in the right direction um, next uh, we're building a product analytics foundation so actually to to see what people do like how they use our product but actually how do things look when they click on a button on their website how do their how does their service look uh, how does their project look like really like the point in time and like here's an example. So somebody re receives a marketing email from us that they can use Terraform to get their service running. Then what we want to see is, okay, how many of those people actually visit our Terraform documentation from that? And how many then actually use Terraform in the API? And for this, we need to get a lot more granular data than we, we have been having before. So before we were mostly looking at the latest state of each dimension or each uh, entity but we had to switch this to actually then start looking at point in time tables. Uh, besides that, we actually want to do this in a really self-service way. And it's also very hard to actually write something like this in SQL. Uh, like you, probably all of you can write it, but then somebody says, okay, and how about this step in between? It's again, really like complex SQL to do something like this. So we had to find a solution for that as well. Um, 
and we didn't have all our user events in one place. So these, like, if these live in three different tables, it's really hard. Um, so what we did is, uh, first thing is we need to get point in time data. So starting with our backend database, we do change data replication with Kafka. So we get actually every single change happening in the backend database we get. Earlier we were doing just hourly batch jobs and we got like the snapshot then. But maybe from an hour ago until now, somebody might have made five changes and we don't know about it. So that when somebody clicks on the button, they were actually using a completely different uh, like type of service than when we look at it when we actually make the last snapshot. So what we were doing is we were creating, like we are still creating type two slowly changing dimension table. So actually when the dimension is like from when until when is it valid so that we can see when somebody clicked on this button, how did it look like? And then we were combi like we were combining all of these in a one big table. Uh, so we have here like our, our fact tables, we have all our API calls, all our website interactions, and then we look at how did the customer look in time, how did the service look in time, and we expose that to PostTalk, which is a open source product analytics tool like Amplitude or Segment. Uh, this is actually really nice that we are able to do this. Uh, and it's helping us a lot to actually see what people are doing in our product. What we reached only now, or next month I actually put it, because we're starting soon, <laughs> is uh, metrics consistency. So currently, this is how it looks like. So we have one big table for revenue, for example. That's where we combine everything into. We look at certain things at the point in time. So it's actually a pretty good table, but we cannot we don't have a semantic layer. And uh, that's probably the biggest problem is size sense there because you actually query SQL and you don't have any, any layer in there. And that's just what we inherited uh, at that time. Um, so we have all these different aggregate tables which hopefully have the same logic, but like you and I know, it probably doesn't. Uh, and yeah, well, that's how it is. But where we are trying to get at now is uh, we're going to switch over to preset, so it's managed superset, and we're going to try to put all this this whole layer into DBT, the semantic layer, or let's see how that evolves as well, because it's quite in early days, but there is a co current integration that we can use so that everybody will then actually use the same metrics when they look at revenue, for example. Uh, and this is actually where, where we're now at. This was my talk, so I'm really curious uh, for questions because I think uh, like maybe you have some learnings for me for where we're now at or how we should change things in the past. Yeah. 